I didn't realize this, but apparently a few years back, while procrastinating, I stumbled upon something that to a few individuals might be considered the early stages of a movement. And then I boldly called this speech, How to Start a Worldwide Movement in 18 Minutes. So whether you're listening to me here or watching this on video, I might fall flat on my face, or I might soar as I explain what the heck is about to happen for all of us as we build anything with the community of people around us. This all began when I had something to write with and something to write on. So to proceed, just take some inventory. Sweet. Got both. Let's begin. I know we don't go very far back but I think I know a lot about every single one of you. You all have work, whether it is school or your part-time or full-time job. We all have health that we need to pay attention to and relationships. This basically forms the human experience. Work, health, relationships, all different ages and stages. We've got these things to focus on. It depends how much focus we decide to give each or all of them. Once upon a time, I was working at a university. You'll notice this very scientific diagram. It has two key methods of communication. While I was working there, I noticed that people used the phone when they needed something from you. People would send you packages in the mail because that was the administrative policy on campus. So whether it was email, phone, snail mail as they call it, it seemed to only be when you needed something or just a mundane administrative update. As a way to mix things up, I would start calling people at work. So again, think of the people in your life, whether it's in school or in your company. I called my people who I worked with, my friends, my colleagues. And I would leave them voicemails that sounded something like this. Hey, it's Blake. Got something really important to say to you. Call me back. And I'd hang up. And they would always call me back. That is a great way to get a call back. <laughs> so when they would call me back, I picked up my phone and said, hey, thanks for calling me. I just wanted to let you know that the thing you helped me with yesterday at work really saved me a lot of time and made it more clear in my mind. So I just want to say thank you. And they would say, no problem. What's the important thing? <laughs> and that was the important thing. And it shocked me how people just grazed over the fact that I genuinely meant that the important part was for me to acknowledge you. So whether this is your friends, your family members, your coworkers, even if you do this, sometimes people don't realize that that is what you actually wanted to say. They sometimes think there might be a catch if all you're doing is sincerely thanking them. And then we had these envelopes on campus that we would send around the campus, and it was free, no charge, no stamps. So people, as I said, would use it just for administrative documents. I created this program called Campus Mailman, where I just printed blank pieces of paper with a mailman on it and my face on the top of the mailman. <laughs> And I just wrote notes to people, just saying, thanks. It was essentially the same as the phone situation, <laughs> but mixing it up, this time sending it through the mail. And do you know how easy it is to blow someone's mind when you mail them something? It's so true. We planned that, so thanks for that. So literally, I start getting this attention in the entire workplace for sending these phone calls, emails, text messages, envelopes, literally just acknowledging people for the things that we think about all the time when things are going well, but maybe we don't say it to the person. I was enjoying this process, but I figured it's important to consult with smart people when doing things that you think are working and that people enjoy, because then it's backed by research. Let's consult the chart. <laughs> According to Gallup.com, the number one reason people leave their jobs is a lack of 
appreciation. Uh-huh. Oh, should have drawn a bigger circle. There it is. A lack of appreciation. Who here has ever heard the term from people, or sorry, the line from people saying, I just left because I felt under... Appreciated. Appreciated. Anyone who leaves a job almost always says something along the lines of, I just felt underappreciated. They didn't appreciate me. They didn't understand me. They don't know my value. <laughs> Whereas if we go back to the phone thing and the envelope thing, all that was was randomly, spontaneously letting people know that they matter and that they're valued. I wasn't even their boss, though. <laughs> and it also pointed out that 67% of people said that in a whole year at their work, not once did they get recognized for anything. 67% is more than 50%. <laughs> it's more than half. And then it also pointed out that people valued praise from their manager as more important than financial reward. That's ridiculous. <laughs> praise is free. <laughs> Salaries are expensive. Let's go on to some more smart people. Harvard Med School. That's legit. <laughs> Two psychologists, Emmons and McCullough, they broke people into three different groups. Those three groups, over a period of ten weeks, had to do a few different things. Group one, they made note of the events that they were grateful for. Group two, they made note of the events that kind of agitated or irritated them. Group three, they just made note of any events that impacted them. No instructions about whether they were bad or good. Just, if you were impacted by it, write it down. So these are the three groups. After the 10-week experiment took place, they realized that the people who noted the things that they were grateful for over 10 weeks, it said that they increased their levels of optimism, and then it actually also surprisingly increased their desire to go be physically active and exercise which inherently decreased the number of visits that they had with physicians. So all I'm doing here, by consulting smart people, <laughs> is pointing out that if we as people typically have things like work, health, and relationships that make up our lives, <coughs> the smart people are saying that in work, appreciation is huge as a way to keep people <laughs> and save money. And the smart people are also saying that it can positively impact your health if you practice gratitude by looking for the good stuff. So I made a logo because I figured, hey, this appreciation, recognition, gratitude thing that I've just been kind of messing around with for a few years, this is legit. <laughs> so just for my own sake, I'm going to make a logo because it's legit, and because Batman has a logo, and he's legit. So now let's hop into some things here, because even if you want to practice gratitude, if you want to appreciate people, this apparently is the most common reason why we just don't. We forget. It doesn't come into our awareness, the prompt or the cue to appreciate people. Because we're really good at letting others know when things are going badly, but some of the time we forget to stop and acknowledge when things are going awesome. So here's some things that I've basically implemented in day-to-day -day life that feel free to take with you, because they're all literally just little cheats to remind me about this gratitude thing, giving thanks to self and others. Thank you cards. I carry these things with me everywhere. I'm like a magician. So I have cards on me at all times, but they're thank you cards. They're blank. Not only do I carry them on my person, but also in my car, I keep them in the glove box, in the side of the door, and then also on the back of my car, my license plate is grateful, which means I can no longer be a jerk while driving. <laughs> because if I am a jerk on the road, and I cut someone off, and they see grateful, it just doesn't make sense. So there's also this heightened level of accountability you can place on yourself if you're committing to practicing this gratitude thing. Also on my wrist, 
I've got this bracelet that just says grateful. Every day, I have to take it on and off. And in putting it on, it reminds me, oh, yeah, that, that thing. Good. Let's get that done before we go to bed. And then also, in my backpack or any bag that I carry, cards. And then I also say to carry a pen or a pencil at all times. Because, mm, bad example, I don't have my pencil or pen, but I got markers. <laughs> in carrying that, if you see an opportunity to appreciate a person for something, you can just write it down. And if you don't carry thank you cards, that's fine. Find the nearest piece of paper in the recycling bin or a possible napkin. There's not really any instance where we can't do it if we want to, because we also have technology at our fingertips now to acknowledge people. And then I also keep a journal, because I've heard many people who keep a gratitude journal, and that's just a way to start and end your day by saying, What's going to go great today, and what went great today? And surprisingly, most of your days turn into being great. <laughs> so feel free to implement any of these. One of them, all of them, whatever. I decided to take this a little further. Because again, old school practices of writing on cards with pen and pencil, or feather pen, that's nice and all. But sometimes it's tedious, you might not have a postal code or a stamp or a zip code, depending how far you're watching from. So I would write notes to my friends and family, and then I would just put it online. So this here says, thank you, Elan. He's one of my best friends in the world, and he's the guy that actually introduced me to this event. So without Elan, I might not have even been invited to this cool time. And when wondering, well, how do I thank people? Or when would I thank people? A great way to think of it is to ask yourself the question, how is this possible? Because how is today possible? Well, I learned it from Elan, and it's made possible by all the incredible team members. How is that delicious meal you're having at a restaurant possible? Well, both the servers who brought it to you and the team in the back at the kitchen who was making it, you going through your stages of life, how did I get to this place? How is this possible? Well, probably family, friends, teachers, coaches. So to Elan, I would basically let him know, hey, Elan, without you, I wouldn't be at TEDx. You rock. Blake. That took me 12 seconds. And because we have technology, take a photo of it. Yeah, you're awesome. Bam. That is now here as long as I keep this file. That means in 20 years, if I stumble upon it in my folders of something, I'll be reminded of it. I'll be reminded of the friendship of Elan. I can now send it to him again decades later and we rekindle that friendship on the spot. That literally took me 12 to 20 seconds to write, and when you digital picture send, it goes so far. And I'm apparently saying that I'm gonna teach you how to build a movement. One thing that I know about movements is that they need to be simple, sticky, and social. This was the most simple and now social thing I could think of, and these things stick to the memory of all people in your life. Because raise your hand if you've ever received a thank you note. Raise your hand if you kept it for a week. Raise your hand if you never threw it away. <laughs> exactly. People move houses and carry their thank you cards with them. <laughs> Seven words that you can basically walk out of this room with to spark any friendship any relationship, if things are going poorly, this can rebuild it. If things are going great, this can make it even better. Hey, I just wanted to say thanks. Whether that is a text, an email, a card, that can completely catch people off guard and only make their day better. Plus, you don't have to worry about what you actually have to thank them for. <laughs> you just start the conversation and then it goes from there. So that's not lazy. It's eliminating the barrier as to why you might not appreciate the people you love the most. Just start it before you leave this room today, before this video ends, 
and then keep that conversation going from this place of gratitude, appreciation, giving thanks. A movement is defined as a group of people working together to advance their shared ideas. Notice how I circled the word people. Because when we think about movements, the most massive things on planet Earth that is built by people, we usually think about the movement, the focus, the topic, the cause. Yet at the end of the day, the fuel behind it is the people. And if these smart individuals all over the world are saying that people leave their jobs because they don't feel appreciated, and if smart people are saying that your health can improve by practicing appreciation, perhaps the way to start any movement is by first acknowledging the people along the way so that they stay with you in the process and that they look nowhere else because they just feel like they matter in that whole journey. To all people, as we've already reviewed, there's a few things that go into a life typically lived. We have work. We now know that if we want to enjoy our time there, if we feel appreciated, we'll likely stick around a lot longer or maybe forever. And that's not just up to the boss. We can do that with the people on our teams, the people in the office next to us, the people we share a desk with, the custodian who keeps the office space, the school, the skyscraper clean. And then we have health. Without health, we are so limited to be able to accomplish anything. And I'm not a doctor. I date one. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. Though, I'm pretty good at this stuff, because I enjoy appreciating others, and if that's actually helping my physical health, I'd be selfish not to share this little hack on life. But relationships, these are the core to the soul food of life, because we need people, and according to all this research, apparently people love feeling like they're needed. And I don't know any better way to point that out to them by making a simple little note <clears throat> and catching them off guard by letting them know that you appreciate them, perhaps at a time they don't even expect to be appreciated. I haven't built a movement yet. I think this is becoming something massive. But I appreciate you making the time to be here today and put up with this little spiel that I just made. So.